What's going on everyone? Welcome into the next entry in our beginner's walkthrough series. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at the farmer phase of the game. This is the first part of the game in any game, whether it be campaign or sandbox. We're going to be taking a look at building layouts, productions, supply and demand, and everything you need to know to get yourself up and running in the early game. With that, let's jump ahead and take a look at an early farmer settlement. So the very first thing that you do in the game is place down your initial housing block as well as your timber production. That's the first stuff that you have access to right here at the bottom. You have access to dirt roads, marketplaces, farmer residences, small warehouse, and timber. You'll see the fish has a lock icon and it has an unlock condition of 50 farmers. Once you hit 50 farmers, you'll unlock the fishery. So how you lay things out is really up to you. There, there's no like perfect way to do everything. It's really how it works best for you and how you want to play the game. Are you wanting to build more efficient and optimization focused? Then you might want to build in a, um, in a way that uses as least space as possible. If you're more and more for aesthetics, then beauty building is probably what you're wanting to look into and find ways to make the game look as aesthetically pleasing as possible. There's lots and lots of different ways to play the game and to build. I recommend you check out some of the layouts over on the Anno 1800 wiki, or I have a video called the 10 by 10 modular setup that you're welcome to check out. It will be pinned down in the comments. I'm not going to go into a lot of layout in uh, detail and everything just because there's a lot of resources out there for layouts. So go out there, do some exploration, see what works best for you. I've built ourselves a small little settlement with a handful of houses and a marketplace. And I've also placed down a lumberjack's hut and a timber and a sawmill. Building materials are kind of the king of this game. You need lots and lots of building materials. And the first one that you need through the farmer tier is timber. You'll need lots and lots of timber as you continue on. I've only placed down one lumberjack hut and one sawmill, but I recommend you possibly uh, placing down up to five or six of these at the very beginning and start churning out that timber so you have more than enough building material coming in and you won't have to worry about running out. The next biggest thing is your citizens and their needs. All residential tiers have different needs associated with them. The farmers are some of the easiest to please. They need access to a marketplace. At 50 farmers, they'll need access to fish. And then at 100 farmers, they will need access to work clothes. Giving access to these needs gives different effects, such as the market giving you five farmers out of a possible 10, the fish will give you some, some more, and then the work clothes will give you even more farmers to max you out at 10 farmers in the home. Once you've reached 10 farmers in the home, then you can upgrade them to workers. Let's jump ahead a little bit and take a look at a slightly more advanced uh, version of this city. All right, so we have skipped ahead a little bit and I've gone ahead and built up a fully fledged and fully kitted out farmer city right here. So what have we got going on? Well, we've got quite a few farmers. We have a total of 322 farmers here. Our farmers have all of their needs met. They have the market. We also have the fish available to them. That gives us three farmers and one coin from income. And we have the work clothes, which gives us two farmers and three coins. So that gives us a total of 10 coins per home and 10 farmers per home. We look under the happiness tab as well. We do get some coins from over here as well. We're getting uh, three coins and eight happiness from the schnapps and 12 happiness and one coin from the pub. So that gets us up to our total of the plus 10 right down there. That also gives us a lovely plus 30 happiness for all of our farmers for having both of these luxury needs met. Happiness and luxury needs are not required. You don't have to fulfill them, but if you don't, then they're going to be very unhappy. You're going to have negative happiness and you will increase the risk of riots and fires and things like that in your city. So I highly recommend fulfilling at least some of their happiness needs, if not all, so you can keep the island uh, safe from riots and everything. So the next thing I really want to talk about is workforce. Workforce is how many available population you have to staff your production buildings. Your available workforce is always found at the top of the screen right here. Your available workforce is your current labor pool 
minus the number of jobs currently staffed, and that gives you your island balance. Now, these, this number is not always an exact representation of your actual island population. There's a lot of different factors that can affect the, the current labor pool, such as the aforementioned expansion category uh, milestones. This plus 50 island workforce would be added up there. So if I had the conqueror effect unlocked, that would show me 190, 191 at the moment. So the workforce at the top is dependent on multiple different factors. But this tells you how much population you have available to staff your factories. All factories require different, num different amounts of workers. And you can always see that either by clicking on the factory itself and you can find it right here at the bottom next to your maintenance cost. Or if you hover over it in the build menu, it is listed under maintenance costs, again, next to the coins. Always make sure you have available workforce, even when you are upgrading to the next tier of citizenry. So from example, from farmers to workers, always make sure you have some farmer workforce because you're going to need to build more farmer tier stuff later on, and you're going to need more workforce. You have to do a lot of balancing with your workforce to make sure you have enough. There is no penalty for having extra workforce. There is no like unemployment or anything. So don't worry about that. You can have as much unemployed workforce as you want. There is no penalty. Just keep expanding. That way you keep making money and everything. So how do I know exactly how much of all of this type of stuff I need to build? As you can see, I've got one fishery, one uh, framework knitters, one sheep farm, one schnapps distillery, one potato farm, and then up here I have expanded our wood production to four sawmill, uh, four lumberjack huts, and four sawmills. How do I know how much of all that I need? Well, that comes into play with the production statistics screen. If you remember from our UI video, that is uh, found by hitting Control Q. And here we have all kinds of new yummy, yummy data points to look at. All about the data points. It shows all of the current goods being produced. You can also filter up here. The one you're mostly going to be looking at first is your consumer goods. We take a look right here. We can see that we have fish, schnapps, and work clothes. Now, what do these numbers mean? Well, these numbers are very, very simple. The blue is your current or potential demand. Potential is when it has uh, hashes through it. It's a. Uh, it won't be just a solid blue. It'll be blue with you know those little diagonal hashes through it. That shows a potential. That means that you might have um, something cut off or something's not producing right. That'll be half hashes in it. For the most part, you won't ever see hashes in your uh, potential demand. Um, there's rarely ever a situation where you have potential demand, uh, but you'll always see the current demand right here. Underneath that is your current or potential supply. This is where the potential does come into play often, especially if you have factories that are not producing correctly. You will see that you might be underproducing because you'd have something wrong with a production chain somewhere. So what does all this right here actually mean? So it's really, really simple. Keep the blue bar less than the green bar. Okay, that's as simple as it is. Keep the blue bar less than or equal to the green bar. This right here means that I have an extra production of about one and I would say 1.4 over our current demand. We are producing two fish per minute and we are consuming just under one per minute. That is what the numbers mean. These numbers are your per, are your per minute uh, consumption and production values. Now this does round up because there are later on some, especially starting in the artisan phase of the game where there are productions that are not uh, equal to like one or two or like 30 seconds or something. It might be um, like a minute and a half or something, some weird stuff like that. It does round up on everything. So just be aware of that. Uh, the numbers are sometimes a little not as keen to look at. You might want to keep an eye on the bar instead. And later on, I'll show you an example of that. So as long as the blue bar is gr less than the green bar, then you are A-OK -okay and you are producing enough of everything. We look under construction materials. We can see that we have a, a current supply of 16 timber per minute. And if we look under raw materials, oh, Hey, we've got a little problem. We are 
We have a demand of 16, but a supply of only 15. So this means that we are underproducing on our wood. Well, what could be causing that? Well, let's take a look over here at our production. No, not fish. Let's click on the lumberjacks. There we go. If we click on our lumberjacks right here. We can see that we've got one at 100, one at 98, one at 95, and one at 92. These two right here are suspect to me. So let's click on that and we'll be over to it. If we take a look at it right here, we can see that this one's producing at 16 seconds. This one's producing at 15, 15, 15. So this is our culprit that is causing us to underproduce wood. Well, how do we fix that? Well, we're going to move it a little bit out of the way. Let's maybe put it right here at 98%. And now it is down to 15 seconds. And if we go back under our control Q, we can see that it is still slightly under, but I'm not going to be too worried about that. Um, building materials, I don't worry if it's going to be slightly under for anything that's related to building materials. Now, later on, when I'm having to use wood for uh, other production chains, I might want to adjust that a little bit and have it coming in at a more smooth rate and have it not under producing. Even though the numbers are the same, 16 and 16, you can see there's a little sliver that it's down. That tells me that we're actually slightly underproducing, but it's not by enough for me to really worry about. Um, again, I only worry about that when it comes to stuff with uh, building materials. Anything else, I would make sure that that is fixed, but for building materials, I don't. As we move on through the screen right here, we can see potatoes and wool. And then under intermediate products, we don't have any right now. So that one has no items listed. But this is how the production statistics screen works. This tells you how much you're producing and how much you're consuming of all the different goods on your island. Um, it's the easiest way to tell how much you need of everything and how much you need to be building. Or if you have overbuilt something, if you had placed down four or five fisheries and you saw that you were massively overproducing fish compared to what you actually need, then you'll know that you can probably either turn off or destroy some of those fisheries because you have too many. You can also see the production times in the build menu itself. If you take a look at something like schnapps, we can see that the potatoes has a production of 30 seconds. And then the schnapps distillery itself also has a production timer of 30 seconds. That's a one to one ratio. So one potato farm will supply one schnapps distillery. Now you can't see how many people this will supply, which is what the statistics screen will show you. But this will tell you how many of one type of input is needed for a factory. It's really easy in the early game, but later on it gets a little more complicated, especially from the artisans and on. But we'll take a look at that later on. So let's take a look real quick at our balance and how everything up here is uh, working out. If we take a look at our balance, we'll see that we are getting an income of 330 from our farmers. And there's a breakdown over here that shows you all of your farmers and how much money you're getting from each one. This may seem a little redundant right now. It's like, well, obviously all of our farmers are getting 10, but later on in the game, you're going to have a lot of different situations where some houses have different effects on them from tra uh, town halls or the palace or something. And they might be getting um, effects on them that modify how much income you get from them. But this right here is a really good way to see where all the money is coming from, from each tier. And then under expenses is where you can start seeing how all of your money is being spent. You can see we're spending 25 on a fire station, 40 on infrastructure, that's for two warehouses, 250 on production buildings, 40 on public services, and then obviously warships, which we don't have any more of at the moment, but this would show up underneath here. So this gives you an idea and you can see where your money is being spent at and how much money is coming in. Early in the game, don't panic too much about your income being low. All you need to do is just keep expanding your population. Keep adding in more homes, more residences, and over time you will go up above your, uh, your calculated expenses and you will get more money. Ultimately, the farmer tier of the game is the tier of the game that you need to spend the least time in. Your goal in the farmer tier is to get to workers. You wanna get everything built up and running as soon as possible get your needs fulfilled and get on to the worker phase because that's where a lot more interesting stuff happens and you need to start dealing with things like um, 
other islands, most likely, unless you got lucky and have everything you need on your first island to get you through the worker phase. Otherwise, you'll have to go find another island. I can tell you right now that we are actually going to be great because we do have hops on this island, which is what I'm looking for for the worker phase for beer production. And that's all you really need to know about the farmer phase of the game. You get your farmers up and running. You can, you can get yourself a small balance up and running. Like I have a balance of plus 47 right now, but it's not necessary. You can just go ahead and skim on to the um, worker phase while running a deficit. You do start with a very healthy uh, income or healthy balance of coins at the beginning. So you can afford to go be in the negative for a little while until you get your economy stabilized in later tiers of the game. But that is going to be it for this episode right here. Just a, an, an initial introduction to the beginning of the game with your farmers, getting them up and running, getting your productions taken care of, understanding how your productions are handled and what your supply and demand needs are and how to calculate that information in the game. In the next one, we're going to take a look at workers and start expanding our city, expanding our productions and taking a look at other islands. I hope this video helped you out a little bit, gave you a little bit of insight into some stuff. If it did, let me know down below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, take care.